Thank you. Then please, Andy, please give us more okay. information about yourself. Yeah. yeah, well, there's not much to say. You said everything already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I'm very old. <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, it's almost 31 years now, not 30 years. But, oh, sorry. Uh, we are working together already for two years. So that was that was a little less than 30, but it's 31 years and. Um, Still, I have to work, and I'm not in pension, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I like I like the job, of course. Uh, I like to help people. Um, yeah, I'm in the in that field of of uh, private health insurance and also pension plans and stuff already for more than twenty years. Specialized, trying to assist customers and uh, agencies like Livington, and um, yeah, and let's just start. That's about it. I'm I'm. In a, from an international family, that's important. Maybe also to know my wife is uh, um, born in the Philippines and she's here for 21 years now. And um, so I know in what situation you are. I mean, I, I myself also studied for one year in the United States. So I also was an expat as a student for one year. And so I know how it feels to be abroad. I know how it feels to come to Germany from all the paperwork and processes with my wife. Mm -hmm. and um, so I kind of can feel your situation. I think that's a very nice introduction, and I think that can relate with most of us here, and you also know exactly how a foreigner experiences in terms of health insurance in Germany. So that's a, yeah. also an added advantage for Andy, I would say, in his life experience. So thanks, Andy, once again. So uh, I will go directly to the content. Uh, it's a small uh, thing like what going to be talk about today. So mostly it's going to be like a small introduction on what is private health insurance, who can take it, how it's calculated, and does pick off a uh, cover same as a public health insurance, what is not covered, can we shift back? So all these small points in uh, uh, little, little slides, and I uh, hope we can cover up uh, within the given time. And also, of course, the claiming process, which most of, which is also a point which is not so clear. Uh, for most of the newcomers uh, and also people who are stay here and also the most important point which is uh, the no claim bonus i think which is also a, a very important factor right now with all the price increase in energy sectors there is something which we can get back uh, by using the no claim yeah so let's go on so what exactly is a private health insurance andy so can you say in your own a few words a little bit well, the system, the health insurance system in Germany uh, exists of two, uh, two different things. The private health insurance called uh, PKV and the, the public one, the statutory, statutory health insurance, the GKV. Mm -hmm. So health insurance in general is mandatory in Germany, as you all know. Uh, once you're permanently here, you have to be health insured. And um, the private one is calculated differently. We'll come to that later. Mm -hmm. And um, it has better, actually a better coverage than the public one. So it's mm -hmm. a little different than in India. Yeah. So the private one, there's also mm -hmm. the point was, uh, is there something what is not included? No, it's not allowed to exclude anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so because otherwise people could get into financial problems. Yeah. So the coverage is better. The pricing is different. The pricing is calculated for each person. Mm -hmm. And for the public one, it's calculated by the income. And for the private one, it's calculated by the age and health situation of the person. Mm -hmm. So that makes it very attractive for most of you, I guess. Um, I'm assuming that most of you are, let's say, in the age between 25 and 45. Um, and in that age, yeah, it makes sense uh, if we calculate, if anybody wants uh, um, offers afterwards, uh, Mm -hmm. Aaron and Livington and me, we can also give you pricing, of course, and answer questions. Because in the public one, you pay, most of you pay more than 900 euro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we also come to the point who's eligible for it. To be eligible for it as an employed person, you have to earn at least 64,000 euro 350. So mm -hmm. let's say 65K, that probably will rise next year, January. Mm -hmm. It actually rises every year, but last year it didn't rise because of the corona. Mm -hmm. um, but usually it rises like 1.5 1, 1. or 1.8, um, 1,800 euro each, each year. So since one year was left out, maybe it even rises more than 1.8. Let's just wait. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, if you earn more than 65K or let's say 70K uh, in the future, then you're eligible for this. And um, then you... 
could save a lot of money and have better coverage. Perfect. So just, uh, um, I think you already explained a lot <laughs> with the Pekofo and Gekofo. So we'll go on to the, uh, like, uh, one question before that, like you mentioned for employees, it is like around 64 to 70,000 based on what it's going to be fixed in January next year. So yes. I think for freelancers and self-employed, it, they don't have this requirement, correct? There's no, there's no limit. Um, if you're a freelancer or self-employed, you can uh, choose public or private, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how much you earn. Yes, that's true. All good, perfect. So I think I just so even if to... you even if you have less in the beginning because you start, you have less than 65k or mm -hmm. 5k monthly then you are um, you're still able to do it perfect i think that's a point maybe interesting to some people here yeah. who are also self-employed i have one question uh, when you say uh, the amount is seven uh, the salary should be 65 or 75 what does that yeah. mean like I, I, for example for me uh, let's suppose uh, my uh, my uh, Packet says that it's uh, 70 and then there is some bonus and mm -hmm. maybe at the end of the year it's calculated uh, more than, seven, uh, let's suppose, 80. Mm -hmm. And am, I am, if I am eligible in that case or is that the base salary is calculated? No, the base salary, of course, the base salary is calculated, but the, the, the example you chose was all the digits were above 65k oh, so what you, okay. what you maybe mean if you have a base salary of 60k mm -hmm. and then you maybe have a bonus of 5 or 10k that would be interesting then of course uh, yes uh, let's suppose then it comes it comes down to the point how realistic uh, is the bonus yeah um, most bonuses are let's say they are paid if there wouldn't be any bonus being paid you would maybe not uh, survive the probationary time <laughs> if if you are doing your job that bad that you don't get a bonus then you probably will be fired before <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so that's that's my experience if you most mostly people get at least 75 or 80 percent or at least 50 percent of the bonus yeah so let's say 50 percent of the bonus plus the base salary should should cover that up probably yeah but it also depends on your hr then yeah if if there's a case like that that uh, like what I said, 60 plus, plus five or plus six or plus seven, then we just have to also talk to your HR. Yeah? We can also help you with that. And um, they decide if you are eligible or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, well, thank, thanks Nidhi for the question. So uh, with that, I'll just move on to the next point, which I think Andy also said in a few words, like how is a private health insurance calculated? I think this is uh, most likely interesting for every anybody new here. As most of you, like you mentioned, as Indians, you are between the age of 25 to 45 here. So please, Andy, tell us, like, uh, I have mentioned a few parameters. Please mention what else will be interesting. Uh, factor well, for as, as, you can, as you can imagine, as younger as you are, as, as cheaper it is, <laughs> as uh, more healthy as you are, as cheaper it is. So it could be if there has been a health history with some illness that you have to pay a little more than one, person who is very uh, completely healthy yeah mm -hmm. the, the gender of the person actually does not um, uh, does not Matter. play yeah. a role anymore because that would be against the law yeah everybody yeah. has to be treated equally so yes 30 year old woman 30 year old uh, man pay the same yeah mm -hmm. that was before 2012 that was differently yeah, yeah. That, um, yeah. but until then uh, it was decided by the European Union mm -hmm. and that is good so of course and um, yeah, we we ask health questions, of course, but most people, let's say between 25 and 45 are pretty much healthy, I would say, from my experience. Mm -hmm. There may be little things, yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe little things who, who don't matter. And so you pay for yourself, for your own age, for your own situation. And uh, let's say what I mentioned before, 900, a person between let's say 30 and 40, narrow mm -hmm. it down. We'll pay depending on the product. There's different, also different product lines what we have. Um, it will be something like four, five, 600, let's say. Yeah? yeah. So four, five, 600 is much less than, than 900. <laughs> Definitely. I think and one point I want to add on is like uh, the employer also pays half in private health insurance also, correct? Yes, yes. Up to the up to the maximum what they pay in the public one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like half of 938 right now. So it's like 460 something. Mm-hmm. But that is um, divided into health insurance and um, and long term disability Pflegeversicherung. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but you get also half of it by the employer until that limit. Yeah. Perfect. So I think this also is an add-on. So the reason I mentioned the previous illnesses, if what kind of illness may not be taken into a, a a private health insurance, like the most common ones, what you have seen in uh, Indians, for example, you, can you give some example? As I said, most people are pretty much healthy. Yeah, I can, I can, <laughs> I can, I can turn it yeah. around. If you have diabetes, uh, we yeah. won't take you. If you have uh, had a heart attack or had cancer, we won't take you. Yeah, if it's something like, let's say you twisted your ankle or you had a knee injury, it depends when was that. Was that like two years or more, two to three years ago? Is it all healed? Uh, meaning you are not, uh, you don't have to be treated anymore. It's all completely healed. Then it would be fine um, mm-hmm. after two or three years. And it only happened once, for example, then there will be no extra fee. If you had it already two times or three times, mm-hmm. yeah, then it, of course, we always want to have um, documents from the doctors and it could be that you have to pay an extra premium or it even could be that we say we don't want to sign the contract. Yeah, but it, it's just um, you can be sure if you are healthy mm-hmm. or even if you have a little extra and you are in that we check everybody seriously. So the premium also will stay constant. So okay. the premium won't rise also too much. All good. All good. So I think that was a point which I wanted to clarify. And uh, another point which I wanted to also add, I mean, I know it's like just three points here, but the questions also wrapped on around it. So age of the person. So you mentioned like when a person is younger, it is cheaper. So does it increase every year when my birthday turns, like when I'm like 30, next year I'm 31, 32. So when I'm 32, it increases automatically because no. this is also a myth which is circulating a lot among uh, no. Indian customers. Yeah. Yes, you pay the age you enter, the age of entrance, and then you keep that price, actually. The, the general pricing is, um, is observed every year, of course. Do we have mm-hmm. enough? Uh, do we have enough income to for all our spendings? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If that is the case, you keep the price. If you enter with 30, you keep the price of a 30-year-old, even if you're 40, 50, 60. Yeah? Yeah. So to be honest, there will be rising in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, some mm-hmm. companies are rising a lot, but we are very conservative about it because we check the health questions seriously, our calculations is seriously. So in some product lines, we had only one rise in the last 12 years, for example. Yeah. Okay. okay. In other product lines, which came new in 2019, there hasn't been a rising at all for now. And we already know until the end of 2023 mm-hmm. that there won't be rising. Perfect. Perfect. So I think this is something which means it is not on individual person, but rather when the whole insurance industry is increasing, then that's some same happens with public also. Because I think when I started in Germany, it was around 700 or 70 something. Now it's almost 940. Yeah, so that is very important. That is very important because the public always points on the private uh, Mm -hmm. that that you cannot pay it one day anymore. But the, the private, the public one is the ones who are constantly every year pretty much rising 25 to 30 to 35 euro every year because okay. not of the percentage of uh, of the uh, of the it, it, it depends because the income is rising the income limit okay. is rising mm-hmm. and if you are eligible for private you are always affected because you're always above the limit yeah mm-hmm. so for that 1800 more you pay more premium yeah so you maybe pay in TK for as just an example. Most of you are in TK. I know from my experience, mm-hmm. you don't pay 938 next year, but you will pay already probably 970 or 980 next year. 60. And in two yeah. years, you probably will pay more than 1,000 euro already. So That's they true. are rising every year, mm-hmm. yeah, and we are not. So, mm-hmm. and if you if you do an Excel for 30 years or 20 years mm-hmm. and do that 30 euro or 35 or 40 euro more. Um, you better don't do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's another inflation. Yeah, yeah that that, inflation that's true. is that inflation has also been there in the last ten years where there was no inflation. True, yeah. that's true. That's true. I think so. This is a generic thing which I wanted to clarify in the depth. So other myth which is also circulating maybe 
I moved to a private health insurance. Just take me as an example. I moved to a private health insurance, and two more, and after two months or something, I fall sick or I have an accident. I had to be treated with a lot of medicines, and the insurance is paying for that. And next year, 2023, automatically my monthly contribution for health insurance doubles or triples. This is also another myth, uh, no. which is circulating. So it's not allowed. It's regulated by law. It doesn't have to do anything with Arak or any other company. Uh, once you are in date of entrance, we do the application form. You are healthy. You mm -hmm. are in for let's say 600 euro. Then 600 euro it is. If there would be a health concern what you didn't tell us, what you had before already, mm -hmm. and we find mm -hmm. out, then of course there would be higher premium. But if you're healthy now and you have a car accident, whatever, you have to stay in the hospital for three months, it will be a hundred thousand euro expenses that won't affect your premium. Your premium will stay 600 because otherwise it would ruin people financially. Yep. If people are ruined financially where do they go to in germany they go to the government oh. yeah open the hands and then the taxpayer would have to pay the bill mm -hmm. so that's why the taxpayer is uh, forbidding it to uh, to make it higher and it's forbidding it also to um to leave anything out from the coverage point of view there's nothing allowed to be left out perfect so thank you i think this these two points i wanted to touch at the start because uh, this is a common myth. Whenever someone asks a question on you know, Facebook or something, immediately someone posts this comment. And when uh, I try to clarify it, again, it goes around loops. So maybe this uh, video, when I post online, will give some insight into <laughs> it from an expert. So that's why. Well, there's, actually, have... there's actually a third one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a, yeah, th yeah. a third one, which is also there. We will, I know we will come to that later, but we can do it also now. because it Please, is, please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The third one is, what if I go to hospital and then I have this... 10, 20, 50, 100K bill, and I cannot pay it because with the claiming it, usually with small bills, you prepay it and then you get it reimbursed from the private insurance. So yeah. in public, you just give your card and everything is done. Here, it's a little different. You have to prepay. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's so concerned. I don't have 50K savings. I don't have 100K savings. Hey, who has that with 25 or 30 or 35? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or uh, not nobody, but not many people. Yeah. Yeah. So no, with the higher bills, you can pass them on right away to us. You don't have to prepay it. We are even checking it for you if it if the hospital didn't cheat on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if they did so, we are arguing with them, like legal mm -hmm. protection. Yeah. And um, which is included for free at that mm -hmm. part. Yeah, like Rechtschutz. Yeah. yeah. Rechtschutz yeah. Arak is famous for also completely, but concerning hospital and doctors and everything is also included in health insurance Perfect. and then we would pay it also directly so you don't have to worry yeah mm -hmm. it's not like in the united states in the united states when an ambulance picks you up uh, and you are in life-threatening situation then they will look for a credit card first oh, that yeah. is not that is not the case here true so, uh, andy is there any uh, limit when you say if the bill is higher uh, no suppose... there's no limit it's no limit it's uh, no limit is allowed it's different than in India or it's different than with travel insurances where you have certain limits. Uh, there is no limit. It's unlimited. But, but let's suppose if my bill, uh, bill comes out to be, for example, 15,000 uh, 15, euro. So yes. in that case, uh, I need to pay or I can uh, ask that? Uh, no, you can pass on everything. You can even pass on, pass on 500 euro. Mm, okay. It's your it's your decision. There is there is no limit you have to prepay. Okay, it's it's just your decision. Um, I got a question here. Yes, Shankar. Yeah. Yeah. So if a person has been with private insurance and it's been it's been uh, I don't know if this is true, uh, it's kind of difficult to get back to public if one is insured at private. Is it the case or? Uh, Shankar, I think that's the coming in the next slide. I will be <laughs> going to that. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> we, okay. No, no, no problem. No problem. Uh, I appreciate your question. So we will address that in detail, what cases we can move and what cases we cannot and what options we have. So don't worry, I, I have definitely addressed this. Then thanks for bringing it up again. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Shankar. So yeah. what I actually wanted to add, Andy, I hope you don't mind. Recently, also one of our uh, Indian customers uh, had a small uh, you know, a treatment for which he had to pay around 300 euros and they did turn the bill and it was uh, handled by Alak also. So for at that situation, they 
both of them are earning they are doing good but 300 euros at particular time was a little bit difficult but it was already handled so there is nothing like a ma- minimum or maximum amount of what will you want to earn this is just what i want to ask uh, for someone who asked this question earlier i think nidhi so so we have uh, try to address all the points so please uh, wait and let us see uh, uh, if something is missed then you can definitely post your questions i already have some in the chat i'll cover that later so this is an example oh sorry <laughs> so this is an example i took uh, probably this is not up to date which i had uh, previously uh, i think before 6 months uh, no the so, price the prices are the same the prices are the same oh, thing, since all 2019 all good all good so i think this is an example for a 30 year old 30 year old person uh, what so if you are 30 year old then you are also earning around 64 then you know how much you are uh, paying in a public so i think with uh, a private you can see at the top right corner of the slide 514 uh, is what you will be paying in compared to uh, what you will be paying in public so this is a small example which i want to cite out and i think uh, andy can add to it like what is this sb here and uh, give us more example well the sb stands for selbstbeteiligung which means deductible in english yeah Mm-hmm. so if you are employed and your employer pays half of the premium it always makes sense to have no deductible or at least a low deductible mm-hmm. uh, to keep the premium high because the employer pays half of it yeah and the employer does not pay half of the deductible why should you do a deductible to make it cheaper yeah if you compare for example this 473 with zero deductible and you compare it with a 1200 yeah this is 347 then you will find out it's more than 100 euro less a month which means to be exact 126 something like that 126 yeah. euro times 12 is like 1500 so you are saving 1500 euro premium a year but you only have to pay 1200 yourself a year not for mm-hmm. each case but yearly yeah it's not like in the car insurance or in the rechtschutz uh, legal, legal yeah. um, expenses insurance that you have to pay the, um, the deductible for each case this 1200 would be for the whole year so if you are self employed or you are a freelancer and you don't get half of the premium from your employer then it makes more sense to have a higher deductible uh, because you are definitely saving 1500 euro and you only have the risk only if you have bills until 1200 then you only have the risk to pay a maximum of 1200 yourself mm-hmm. but you're saving 1500 yeah but for That's everybody right. who is employed it doesn't make sense because this whole thing is divided by 2 mm-hmm. yeah and if you are saving 1500 euro divided by 2 you are saving 750 euro for yourself and 750 euro for your employer so it doesn't make sense why right? say for the employer <laughs> yeah when when they're ready to pay so it doesn't make sense definitely yes. so i i think in, uh, in in primitive terms of what we have you can compare the zero uh, self detectable or sb to a public insurance uh, yeah. like yeah. The same yeah. way yeah. but plus plus what is coming at the end the no claim bonus the no yeah. claim bonus of course is much higher if the premium is higher mm-hmm. and you even get an extra one and from that no claim bonus not yeah. to promise too much you don't have to give back to your employer so for for employed person is really much better to have zero or 300 deductible that's true that's true i think also the other points which i which you can see on the blue uh, like regarding when you go to a dental treatment like 0% sorry 100% for dental and 80% i think this is a little bit different from uh what we have in a, a public insurance if i'm correct also you can choose a one or two public band insurance band. you yeah. are getting much less you don't have 100% ca- you have 100% coverage of dental treatment yes but only of the simple ones and then uh, if it's uh, dentures or orthodontics it's much less in the in the okay. public one okay i think we'll come to that point when we talk about the advantages so Yes. Uh, I hope this example uh, gave a uh, insight for everybody so 514 divided by 2 is what you will pay from pocket and the other half will be paid by employer in short words so let's yes. now go to the uh, next slide oh, so a short question Bihar. yeah sh- yeah shivara yeah so the previous uh, in the previous slide you mentioned the uh, tariff for 30 year old uh, yeah. and how does it change is it changing with Um, every single year like for 30 it's a different 31 it's different or is it like 30 to 35 it's one tariff no 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 it's changing every year it's changing every, every year, year. Mm-hmm. and depending on the deductible depending on the product line it is like something like 
8, 10, 12, 15 euro more monthly. Ah, okay. Like, okay. so 31 here with no deductible would probably be something like 483 or 485, something like uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so as then, I said, you keep that price all your life. Yeah. So if you have uh -huh. a chance to, if you have the chance to, to change this year, uh -huh. because we are always calculating 2022 minus uh -huh. your birth year. So if somebody is, let's say, born 1992, yeah, uh -huh. so it would be 2022 between uh, minus 1992, he would be 30. So at the 1st of January, it's 23. Ah, then he okay. would be 31 already. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. And you have a, you, if you are above that um, income level, you have mm -hmm. a cancellation period of two months. Mm -hmm. It has to be two months in between. So we are in August now. It means September, October in between. You could start 1st of November. If you still need time, yeah, to, so, and you would decide in September. Mm -hmm. You cancel in September, then October, November is in between. You mm -hmm. start first of um, December. So actually, this Zoom call is a perfect timing mm -hmm. because if you start January first, it would be more expensive. As I said, 10, 12, 15 euro a month, and that's for your whole life. Yeah. So okay. um, if it's like 12 or 15 times 12 months, it's like 150 euro your whole life. So to make the decision now in August and September could save you up to five six thousand euro the next 20 yeah. 30 years and, and by life you mean after retirement also right it's the same cost as long what, as you're, yeah. what is that again i didn't get that um, uh, you mean also after the retirement right so yes after, yes during yes, during yes, the, retire, yes. the retirement age also yes. you'll be the same no there won't there won't be a, a you won't jump um, up with a premium you don't have to worry mm -hmm. okay yeah. And what is this difference between this 430, 473 here and the 514? So, uh, is there any extra? Oh, that's a long term, we... long term disability, the Pflege Physician. Ah, Pflege Physician. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, health insurance of two components. One is like uh, Andy said, like yeah. health plus mm -hmm. long term. Yeah. So, uh, what you see at the top is a combo of both, which normally health insurance takes over. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a combo. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Super. Thank All good. You. And thank you for the question, Shivaram. I hope that answers. So now yep. let's go yes. to the next. Um, so, yeah. So this question, I think, was already covered by Andy, but still I'll just uh, repeat it once in short. So uh, like private health insurance gives the same coverage as a public health insurance. Does it leave out anything? I think this is what is uh, what was asked, but please repeat it once again, the answer for the client. As I said, we are not yeah. allowed to exclude anything yeah, okay. that is also the reason if you have a health history. And um, I always try to explain it. Let's, let's make an example. We have Arun, yeah. we have uh, someone of you, yeah, and we have me. So we have three people who are interested in entering. And let's say, Arun, are you having a health history? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have a health history. You don't have anything, okay. <laughs> but in my role model, you have something, okay? All right, all you right, have, all right. You, you have, let's say you have a small thing with your knee, okay? Probably and not. I have asthma. I really have asthma, yeah? Okay. And, and the third person, all of you are completely healthy, of course, yeah? So it, it would not be fair that you pay for my asthma, yeah? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it also would not be fair that you pay for Arun's knee, so it's just calculation. That's why Arun would get a little extra. And that's mm -hmm. why I wouldn't even get into it anymore. Yeah. So to otherwise expenses would explode one day. That's what's happening in the public. But we are not allowed to exclude something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in that case, I would not get an offer from Arak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am privately health insured for more than 30 years already because uh, back that time it wasn't called asthma. It was like bronchitis. And then I still got in and stuff and legally in. Yeah. But it got worse with allergy and everything so but once you are in you are in you won't get extra even if it gets worse something yeah you are in and you are in for that price but we are not allowed to exclude anything yeah except of we could exclude something with the teeth with the teeth we are allowed mm -hmm. to exclude something because that is not mandatory mm -hmm. yeah but it also doesn't make sense yeah uh, even if there's something going on with the teeth you it should be covered um, at least um, yeah, then you, you could rather pay an extra premium. If there's mm -hmm. a missing tooth, you can pay an extra premium. 
and then you even can uh, repair that, yeah, oh, or get a new one. Perfect. So I think you gave a beautiful example, which explained uh, how, I mean, also a live example of yourself, like how you have currently have a condition, but it doesn't make the monthly payment higher. So I think uh, that also explains the second question. Is there something missing that is, uh, you know, that is something in take off of, in take off of like something like that. So I think that's also self-explanatory. We don't have to repeat that question again. Um, so I'll go on to the next slide, uh, which is like coming back to Shankar's question, like shifting back to uh, public insurance. So this is one question which pops every mind. I, I really don't understand sometimes the reason. Sometimes also there are valid reasons. So can we shift back when we want? What happens during job loss? After what age I can't shift back? So these three questions, Andy, please take your okay. time and uh, you can answer these. Yeah. Okay, go to the first question. Can we shift back when we want? Uh, yes and no. You cannot go back all the time. Yeah. It means if your situation doesn't change, you are still employed, you are still earning more than 65K, you decided for the private, nothing changed, then you cannot go back. Then you have to stay with the private. Then mm -hmm. it's really once private, always private. But yeah. if you go below the income level, yeah, that's, of course, somebody who's earning 70K doesn't want, want to earn 60K. Yeah, but if you really would want to get out of that private one, there's no reason for me. I mean, you're going out of a system where you have a better coverage for less money. Mm -hmm. But if there's a need, for example, you'd say you and your wife uh, are expecting triplets or quadruplets and you have <laughs> to pay for each kid. Yeah, then let's say you really would want to get out. Then you just go to your employer and ask if you can do part time. Mm -hmm. You do 80 percent, 70 percent. You go below the income level. You go back. OK, if. Worst comes to worst, second question, what happens during your job loss? Yeah, um, then you are automatically in the public one. Yeah, if we have a certificate about that, then you automatically can opt out of the private one. Yeah, there is an age limit of 55. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I said it doesn't make sense, for example, for a 50 year old or a 52 year old to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that most people are between 25 and 45. If you are at 55, yeah, and then it's a complicated thing, there's a rule um, that then you cannot go easily back to the private one, uh, to the public one, sorry. But mm -hmm. there's always one possibility for all of you, and that is your big joker. You are Indian, most of you, I guess, I assume <laughs> you are Indian. Yeah. yeah, if you go back to your country, if you leave the country, we will end the contract right away. And then if you're coming back into the country after six or 12 months, you can go into the public again. Okay. So that is your joker. Yeah. For a German customer, it's very unrealistic that a German customer will move abroad to do that move. But you also have that option. So if you sum it up, mm -hmm. if there's really a situation where you really need or want to get out, you always have a possibility to get out. That's the part of the first question where I said yes and no. <laughs> no for if nothing changes, but if nothing changes, there's also no need to get out. Yeah. But That's Andy, uh, in a condition like if a person uh, is above 55 and he has a German citizenship now, yeah. in that case, if he want to move back to TK or something, he yes. cannot? No, he cannot. Because okay. they, stay, they say uh, the public one says, and that's fair, um, they don't want people to, to profit from the private system when they're young, mm -hmm. paying less, having better coverage. And then when they are old, statistically, they are causing the, the claims, then they come back. Then the mm -hmm. system wouldn't work. Then the public okay. one wouldn't cost 930 euro, but then the public one would cost probably 1,500 euro. Yeah, so that wouldn't be fair. They don't want that you just choose your advantages. Um, in, in German, there's a saying, it's like Rosinen picken. Yeah? Yeah, Rosinen is raisins. They don't want you to pick the raisins. Yeah? They don't want you to pick, the, the, the pick always what is best. That's why this age limit is there. And but in case if I do, if the person doesn't have a German citizenship and he has Indian citizenship, the one which you said that he can go it, back it, to India. It does, it, does depend, it does depend on the citizenship. I just made my example because you mm -hmm. have Indian origin. 
even if you have a German uh, citizenship, let's for example, my wife, my wife uh, uh, is born in the Philippines, but uh, she, she came here 2001 and uh, she has German citizenship since 2007. So even if she would, or if we all of us would move to the Philippines or to India or to the States, then we all of us, even me, could get out of the private insurance right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it, it um, depends. So uh, to add another point to the question. So when you get back to Germany, so would you be back in the public or in, in the private ones? It depends on the time. If you if you get if you go out of Germany for three weeks, you will be you won't get back in the public. Yeah, but if it's a period longer than twelve months, if you really move out, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not for a vacation or like, something. Like Abmeldung, you are doing that. Yes, yes, going yes, out. yes. Abmeldung, Anmeldung again, and then at least twelve months, then you will be also accepted there. In the public ones. Yes. Ah, oh, okay. Because they have to take you in something, and public has to take you in. That's but let's be long. let's be let's be realistic. What we are talking about here is a very constructed thing. It's very unrealistic that this is happening in in uh, in real life. Yeah, because if you are in an age like fifty plus, I am fifty now, and um, I'm privately health insured since I'm twenty seven. I have the better claims, the better coverage. I paid less. I'm still paying less. Yeah, even though I have two children with me in short. Yeah. Why should I want to go back? There's no reason. The reason is if I get unemployed, then I go go back anyways. Yeah. Or the reason is if I would get what I said, three, four, five, six children. Okay. But that question I'm always asking you already in the in the consultation. I'm always asking you how many children do you have? Is it your plan to have? two, three, four children or not. Yeah, because then, of course, I would also say maybe maybe it's not the right thing to change to private. Then we have additional ones for the public ones. Yeah, if that's your plan to have a big family, which is perfectly fine. But if you have two kids, it still works. Yeah, I'm also the best example for that. Because for a kid, you don't pay four, five, six hundred. You pay between one and two hundred for a kid. Andy, one question. What happens if, for example, if you're not satisfied with the private insurance? Then you, if nothing changes with your job situation, then you only have the chance to go to another private one. Then you don't, because you don't have the right to go back to the public one because you're not satisfied. Change the provider as well. Yes, yes. From a different company, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. And one more thing. For example, if I'm working now and I'm bringing my wife from India to here and also like later when I have kids in public insurance, I know I heard that we don't have to pay extra premium for the wife and the kids like as dependents. Is it the mm -hmm. same in private also? No, in private, every person is calculated and for each person you have to pay, but mm -hmm. you have to think in the Public one, you are paying already nine hundred thirty-eight, and 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 the family is included, but you are also paying nine hundred thirty-eight for yourself. So it means, mm -hmm. as I said in the private one, I said four, five, six hundred. So I don't know your age now, but if you are still about planning to grow a family, then mm -hmm. you are maybe around thirty plus minus. I don't know. Um then it's also possible to do the private one for 400 and then for your wife also for 400 yeah and okay. you don't have you don't have the highest plan you have the lowest plan but our lowest plan is still having better coverage than the, than the public one yeah so it it works basically um with with your spouse and one kid it would still work with your spouse not working here, but only being a, a housewife or a house, whatever, house husband. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. housewife, but I don't want to. to uh, it's also maybe possible that the women is earning and the, the guy yeah. is staying at home. That's what I want to say, gender equality. Um, the, two adults, one kid works. Two adults, two kids, war doesn't work financially. You still have a much better coverage. It's still possible, of course, yeah, but it doesn't um, work from the point of I'm going to save monthly. You, you have to decide anyways, what do you want, to save monthly or to have a better coverage or both? If you are single, it's both. 
if you have a family, you have to decide what do I want? Do I want the basic coverage of the public? Yeah. And in mm -hmm. some areas, if you are still healthy, you think TK or, or the public one is perfect. If you really get severely sick, then you will find out there's a lot of things in the public one which is not covered. Yeah. I, everything is covered, but only on a basic level. And then if you want the doctor of your choice because you have a complicated thing, you are not getting paid for it. Yeah, you can go to any doctor, but then you have to pay him privately. And okay. with us, you have a free choice worldwide. Okay, I think we sure. I think we'll come to the uh, advantages part, but I think you covered up most of them, Andy. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, I thanks, think I, I hope it clarified the question. Let's move on to the slides and we'll keep up the questions the last because we're only at 650. <laughs> I hope it's fine. So I have actually one Excuse question. Excuse me, I don't slide. have a... <clears throat> I don't know, I have a question over here. So let's say yeah. that we are, so far we have been talking about the uh, guys who are employed. How about yeah. a freelancer? <clears throat> so if a freelancer basically does not have a project or something, you know, for a few uh, months, mm -hmm. then what happens in that case? You still have to pay the private insurance. Okay. I mean, because it, I mean, you also have to pay, uh, you have to also have to pay the public one because as long as you stay in Germany, uh, the health insurance is mandatory. Yeah. So whether it's uh, public or private, you're a freelancer, you are supposed to pay it monthly in, in short words. Yeah. Of course, of course, the, the public one is asking you for your income. Okay. Mm -hmm. But once you start being a freelancer, they ask you what is your planned income because you don't have experience maybe yet. So mm -hmm. most of the times you pay since you don't have any experience you pay half of the maximum so you would pay half of 938 something around 450 but then after one year they ask you how much did you earn yeah and if you are a freelancer in it or in engineering a lot of people of are you a lot of uh, indians are in those two fields from my experience mm -hmm. and you are a freelancer then you probably have more income than 5k a month yeah, because if you are a freelancer, you have to pay the taxes yourself. You have to. So there's also maybe you have six, seven, eight K, whatever, five K. Yeah. And um, if you have four thousand something already. You reach the maximum of the TK already. You are paying nine hundred euro already. So if you earn five, six, seven, eight, you always pay the maximum. You always pay nine hundred thirty eight. Mm -hmm. Next year, maybe 960, 70. Then next, next year, maybe more than 1,000. And with us, you would start maybe with four or 500 and you stay there. Maybe it's also sometimes 10 or 20 euro more. But as I said, in the last couple of years, we were very conservative and very good about that. All good. Thank you, Andy. I think that uh, clarified uh, was this question. So I'll just go next to the dental coverage, which is also a quite important point uh, in compared to the uh, public and private. So I'll just talk about private here. So does it pay for all the cost? What is not covered and uh, how much? And what is advantage in uh, general in take off all in dental, for example? You say in few words. Yeah, it pays for, uh, for the dental treatment 100%, as you showed before. Mm -hmm. um, for the dentures or the orthodontist, it, it depends on the product line. It pays like, let's say, 80%. In some product line, even 90%. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, if there's a missing tooth already, mm -hmm. you would have to pay an extra premium for that. And I always would advise you to do so. Mm -hmm. You could also say, no, I don't want that one covered. Mm -hmm. it, that is possible. But then that one wouldn't be covered. And also everything what is um connected to it let's say mm -hmm. you have one tooth missing okay and then the tooth on the right the tooth on the left and the tooth on the upper part if it's down here mm -hmm. so six tooth six teeth could be affected by one tooth missing because they are leaning they're yep. leaning yeah. towards the hole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you should always pay the extra premium the extra premium is like between 10 and 20 euro so 10 mm -hmm. and 20 euro on five six hundred euro is nothing Okay, okay. And uh, the advantage in, in, in yeah. private is, of course, you get faster appointments, you have different treatment, you have the best treatment, you have it fully covered until 80 90% mm -hmm. um, in the 
public one, for example, if you have an implant, implantation, mm -hmm. it costs two, five to 3,000 euro, the implantation, and they pay you something like four, 500 euro. The rest is on, your, on, on you. Mm -hmm. For and one tooth. For one tooth. One yeah. tooth. And we, an adult person has 32 teeth <laughs> in the mouth, excluding okay. the wisdom teeth, is 28. Mm -hmm. So you have 28 chances of paying 2K yourself. That's a, it's a great possibility. I think there's an other chance also of this uh, uh, tooth filling where normally in public, uh, the gray thing is for free or higher coverage. And then yes. when you want the teeth color. So what, what exactly is that? Uh, if you, have, in that? you always get the basic one in the public one. Okay. You also you always get the basic coverage. Yeah, there is um, for each treatment in the law, it says you get like for this treatment, you get like 20 or 30 euro. And then if you want a higher quality or a better material, or mm -hmm. a better looking, a better color, then you have to pay extra for it, even if you're in the public one. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, I think before I jump on, uh, if there are further questions in dental, please write and comment, I'll ask at the end. So uh, what is like the, why do private health insurance get quicker appointments, for example? Why do they get compared to a, a normal a public health insurance because as i uh, as i just explained the law with the 20 and 30 and 40 euro that's also what yeah. the doctor gets so if the doctor is treating somebody from public he maybe gets 20 euro and then mm -hmm. if it, it's you he maybe gets 100 euro so doctors are doctors of course they want to help people but doctors are also more and more salespersons because they also have to cover their costs okay yeah? and so they also want to earn money, of course. That's why some doctors only treat private. Yeah. Sometimes you read private praxis. Yeah. 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 Private praxis means they are only taking private ones. True. Yeah. And, and and you can be sure it's not the bad doctors. It's yeah. the good doctors. It's usually not the doctors who are age 28 or 30. It's the ones who are already maybe 40, 50, who are already yeah. 10, 20 years experience. Mm -hmm. And then they said, I don't want to work 12 hours a day. I'm just going to work half time, four to six hours, only do private and earn double. That's, yeah, I, that's I their choice. At the end of the day, it's a professional choice they take. <laughs> that's yes. correct. Perfect. So I think this is what I wanted to uh, address because there's always this question on the mind. Why do they, why do private health insurance always say they get quicker appointments? I think at the end, it explains itself that more is paid. So people want to work with more money. Makes sense. Absolutely. So I think the next point is also a quite important one, which uh, also a point which is uh, currently interesting because, you know, the ad fares like flying to India or bringing parents from India is very expensive. I traveled recently, one way ticket I had to book once. Uh, when coming back, it costed me in Indian currency almost uh, 80,000 rupees, in German currency, 1,000 euros for Eintreise. Yeah. So I think uh, when a person is planning baby and want to bring parents or uh, in, in laws to support the childbirth, then they also have to take in this cost. So this point will be a very interesting point for many of them. So uh, cutting my story, so <laughs> I'll come back to what is covered in maternity? Does it cover all the cost? How does a newborn child is uh, covered? Can I plan the childbirth in India? Which means will the pregnancy expenses, which we, if pregnancy is happening in India, will this be covered for the person? Please explain your okay. words. First okay. questions, very easy, yes. <laughs> it is yeah. paid for all the costs because nothing yeah. is excluded. Second question, the newborn, mm -hmm. if you are insured with us for more than three months, one parent, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be both parents, then the newborn can be insured with us also without health questions. Very important. Mm -hmm. if the child uh, has problems coming into this world, has to be treated in ICU or whatever. It's all covered. There's no health questions for the newborn. So the newborn is covered the same way you are. Can I plan the childbirth in India? Also, yes. Yeah, we are covering worldwide 12 months a year in Europe and three months a year worldwide. So if you get pregnant and then you are going right away to India, it won't work. That is like eight or seven months from the time where you know. But if you would go there like six in the sixth or seventh month, something like that, and uh, if you plan it like that, um, you should go because I think after seven months, uh, airlines don't have to take you anymore mm -hmm. and they won't yeah, because they don't want to have a birth on the plane. Um, then it, it's possible. yeah. And even 
you can prolong those three months even. And you just ask us before, yeah, you can say, I want to go half a year to India, then you have to pay an extra premium for those three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is, don't worry, it's not triple and quadruple, it's like maybe 30, 40, 50%. Um, extra, but then you can do everything in India also. Perfect. So this will help I mean, uh, like you, if you're pregnant or your wife is pregnant, you can plan that in India so that you have the uh, moral support of your whole family instead of bringing them all the way here in the, in terms of financially, I'm saying just getting more expensive. Currently. Of course, being, Cons- being surrounded by your language and everything by the system, you know. Yeah, also the heating expenses going to increase if I bring my <laughs> <laughs> in-laws then and, and, and of course my parents, but it doesn't matter. Four-person household has to pay 430 euros is the calculation I read yeah. recently. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that, but everything is money. So I think this is also a uh, savings. Yeah, uh, that's aspect. true. That's true. True. Thank you. And I think this is a very important point which I wanted to address. So yeah. um, Hi, Aaron. Uh, yeah. Sorry to uh, disturb uh, here. Yeah, I have a yeah. few questions, like three three questions in total about this maternity and, and the husband and wife working. Uh, hi, hi, Ashmit. Yeah, uh, the first question is, uh, both husband and wife are working and uh, wife plans to go into maternity. So mm-hmm. what happens in this case if both of us are privately insured? Uh, well, you have the maternity leave in Germany um, by law, which is, I think, eight weeks before the birth date and six weeks after, or the other way around, yeah, but yeah. it's eight plus six or six plus eight, something like that, that is covered anyways by the employer, and the employer has to pay you fully, yeah? Mm-hmm. After that, and then, of course, you also still get, if you're an employed person, you still get half of the premium for the health insurance. You have to stay health insured, of course. Um, if you are planning to go to Elton site after that, yeah, mm-hmm. it could be for up to 12 months for, for a single person um, or up to 14 months for both parents together. Then you don't have to pay the premium with us for six months. Okay. After six months, you have to pay the premium. Yeah. Um, or you can also go to a lower plan where you don't pay, let's say, 600 but 400. And then after the Elton side, you could also go back from the 400 to 600 without health questions. So that is a practical solution that you can survive financially and still have the better coverage. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you go to the second yeah. question? Yeah. yeah. The second question is uh, uh, husband and wife are working again. Uh, and then we have like two children. And Mm -hmm. the wife thinks to work less, probably like uh, not 40 hours, maybe like 30 hours per week. And and, uh, even her salary uh, automatically gets reduced and she still wants to stay with private. And uh, in this case, will will our uh, contribution also gets reduced or how it is? Okay. Once you go below that 65K, you are actually automatically have to go to the public one. But if you are in private one already, yeah you she did 40 hours before and then she wants to do 30 hours then you can um, apply with a public one um, an antrag stellen of befreiung which means um, mm-hmm. um, you are exempt from the duty but that you so should really think of very well before doing it um, because once you do that exemption you won't get back into the public one even though okay. if you okay. earn only 1,000K or if you only earn 1K or 2K, you will never go back into the public one. And so I'm, I'm actually not advising that. In that situation, okay. I would advise go that the wife should go back into the public, that she can um, have pay children extra, in the account. extra insurances. The children go with the husband. Um, they have to go with the husband then because the husband is earning above 65K. But I, I still would... Um, um, advise it like that. It's it's actually my situation. My wife is uh, working part time and she's in public one. Okay. So so if if wife is in part time and, and working as uh, or, or having a uh, health insurance of public one, is there a possibility to take also children under her her contribution? No, 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 no. It's the same thing. The government says if one if the one who's earning more has to uh, insure the children. Because okay. otherwise it would not work with the system. Then you would only take out the advantages again. But as I said, a father with two children is no problem. 
that's also my example. You pay four, five, six hundred plus children one to two hundred. Yeah. So if you have a middle plan, you maybe pay five hundred plus one fifty plus one fifty is eight hundred. It's still less eight hundred than nine hundred thirty eight, and you have a much better coverage. Okay. If you have three, four, or five children, as I said before then it will be more than 1,000, of course. Then you have to think, is it, is it worth for me the better coverage? Yeah, um, or not? Yeah, I think in most recent case examples, I can uh, give you like the most common reason why some people move to uh, private is also because the kids wanted uh, to have quicker appointments. Like kids don't, can't wait when the teeth is, you know, full of pain for public and then find an appointment with private, they got quicker. I'm talking about big cities, this happened in real. I think two yeah. or three weeks back. So I think this is also a very important point. But well, I, 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 we are over the time anyways, but I still have a couple of minutes if that's fine for most of you. I don't yeah. want to talk too much about my situation, but when my daughter was born, my kids are already 17 and 15 years old. But when my daughter was born 17 years ago, um, my wife had a hidden um, pregnancy diabetes. So my daughter... Uh, when she was born, didn't, um, didn't want to breathe, right? So she had to be in ICU right away. It was for three weeks. It was the worst three weeks in my life. It was the happiest moment of being a father, but she was really in life danger. And in those three weeks, she was privately insured because I was privately insured, okay, without health questions. In those three weeks, there were bills for more than between 50 and 70K. And they gave her treatment with medicine to save her life, which was not covered by the public one. So just not to threaten you, but to make you think. Yeah, if a doctor, you're having a newborn, a doctor says it's very critical. We have option one and two. Option two is a better medicine, but you have to pay for it yourself. And the medicine costs 20,000 euro. It's not made up. It's really the example of my daughter. Yeah, she got in the first half year of her life, she got a medicine. It was like a vaccine. It was actually against the respiratory virus syndrome. Yeah. And a baby doesn't have an immune system. So that she had to take that every four weeks. And that medicine costs one milliliter, 1,300 euro. So if you sum it up those seven months over the winter, it was 19,312 euro. And I was privately insured and every cent was paid. The public one would not have paid a single one. I'm telling you this example very emotionally because it saved my daughter's life. If I would have been publicly insured, I would have gone to the bank and asked for a credit. Of course, it's your child. Yeah. But not everything is covered in the public. What do you think? There can be situations which can be also, you know, because we are talking always about the money here how much money we can save we have the much better coverage that's should be the message that's the important point true i mean we are using the advantage that we are young to get to the get it cheaper but the aim of private is actually to give you a, a better coverage that was the purpose of it uh, for people who are earning more so thanks and i think i don't want to take you emotionally um i just want to ask one i have one question yeah please Anit, yeah yeah um is it is there any minimum salary limit to enter into private insurance? Like the 65K is just the minimum limit? Yes, or... for the employed person, for the employed person. For the self-employed okay. or for the freelancer, there is no limit. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just have one question, Andy, before I go and to claim. In private and... insurance, yep. are there any different levels? Are there what? different levels that you mentioned? Can we take a package A or package B in private insurance? Yes, yes. We have we have uh, three different product lines. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I, I think for uh, explaining the three product lines, you might have to uh, talk in private, uh, private. Su separately because it might not be mm -hmm. easy to do it over a uh, general call. I can share you the PDF in English, which has all these yes. product lines, so yes. that you can uh, go through it and then we can uh, yeah. do it in detail. I hope it's fine. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I just have one question, Andy, then I go to the claiming. And I think claiming already it's clearly not written. So what if like two parents are take off how? Like they are privately insured. They have two kids. Yeah. And uh, and uh, for example, can one parent stay in take off with two kids? Or is it like, can they split the child between the both? 
like one kid with Vekov for parent, one kid with Vekov for parent. How does it work? This is one general. If question. both if both parents are earning above sixty five k, yeah, then that is the only situation. If both are above or if both are below, yeah. yeah. Then you can decide. I mean, if both are below, you cannot do the private one. But if both are above, then one parent could stay in public and ensure the kids in public. Yeah, and the other one could go alone in private. All good. I think this is one but, key point. But yeah. you have to know. But yeah, you have sorry. to know yeah. if that other spouse will go below because of working thirty hours instead of forty hours. Then all four of them have to be in the private one all at once. Yeah, okay, so that should also be well thought of. <laughs> okay, that is always a catch. So you have to be careful with what you plan. <laughs> it's not no, always. No, we said we are going to talk about advantage and disadvantage. Yeah, we sure, are sure. always honest. Yeah, that's the best yeah. way. No, I think that's that's perfectly right because uh, we don't sell anything false. We try to put it right, and if it suits the customers, then you do it. Yeah. If not, then we tell them straight out the face. So thanks again for Andy for that. I'll just keep it short, guys. We have two more. So how to claim? I think we have given three things. Like you can pay and claim. That's one straightforward process, and you can uh, claim directly by sending the bills to the provider, which already uh, was given an example. You don't have to upfront. Always pay from hand. You can also submit the bills to Arag. In this case, where, where we are, Andy is working at, or you can also uh, like the medium which you can use is you can use an app or a phone, which is also in existing and in running condition. So mm -hmm. I just want to tell this myself fast. So and uh, go to the no claim bonus, which is also a quite important point. So what is this no claim bonus, and how much can a person expect? Can you please say in few words? Well, if you only have, uh, if you only have, like, say, checkups, yeah, and the checkup uh, you should do um, doesn't count for um, for the no claim bonus. It doesn't destroy the no claim bonus. If you only have small bills, you have a, um, let's say, you have a um, a bad cold, yeah, not corona, but bad cold, uh, just a normal one, and you go to the doctor because you don't know if it is corona or not and then you pay maybe 100 euro for everything, then it doesn't make sense to turn that in because the no claim bonus at the end of the year is 2.5 monthly premiums. Yeah. Plus, depending on the product line, plus up to 900 euro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So under the line, if you are a normal employed person, you will always have a no claim bonus, let's say between 1.5 and 2.4 K. Okay. So that is a years. lot of money. Yeah. If, if you if you take the two point four k divided by twelve months, it's like two hundred euro a month worse. And mm -hmm. your employer paid half of it, but as I said before already, you don't have to give it back to the employer. Yeah. yeah. And so, those this no claim bonus, the the public one doesn't have. And Andy, just one question, like it is, it is not to encourage people from uh, claiming, I mean, not claiming something, but rather than if you are really healthy, then we are actually, you can make use of this yeah. advantage. And if yeah, there's something that's... small, <laughs> sorry, if there is some small bills, like, you know, I also catch cold often yeah. and my bills are like 50, 60 euros for a checkup, then I just paid myself 120 but in no claim, I get say a thousand eight hundred euros. Yeah. Then actually, I'm what making... you usually do if you have small bills, you pay them yeah. and you collect them, and then October, November comes, you decide how much should I pay this year? Do I turn it in or not? If a person doesn't care about the no claim bonus, of course they can. Yeah, directly. They can turn it in right away in February, March. There, yeah. It's not a must, but mm -hmm. it, it's of course smart to pay two hundred euro, not to destroy two thousand euro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just a financial uh, choice, I guess. Yeah. Yes, true. but we are helping you also with that after you sign the contract. Yeah, so we don't yeah. leave you alone. Um, Aaron is there, Livington is there. Um, yeah. Perfect. We also so, help you. Yeah, Aaron, I, I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, Please, Bharat. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one is related to uh, uh, if both the parents are earning about sixty-five thousand, mm -hmm. and if one of them is in public and one of them is in private. Mm -hmm. So you, you said that the kids can be in public. If uh, both that, parents earn above 65K, yes. So it, it doesn't it depend on who is earning higher? In, if one is higher and one is lower, then the kids mm -hmm. have to be privately insured with the one who is higher. Mm -hmm. Then they cannot uh, stay in public. Uh, just... 
Uh, Bharat, just to, sorry to interrupt. Just to understand the question, what you mean is like, say, both of you are earning above sixty-four k, but say in your case, you are earning eighty and your wife is seventy. Is this your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so Andy, in this case, like both of them are above sixty-four, right? So they can actually choose. I think what he then, means is, yeah, then you can choose. Then you can yeah, choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the question also was the, a little also bit. Also, the person, yeah. also the person with the seventy k could be privately, and with the eighty k could stay in public, or the other way around. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's your free choice, as long as both are above the limit. Okay, uh, and the kids can stay in public. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, thanks. Yeah. And the second question is regarding uh, maternity. During maternity, uh, there are a lot of scans uh, that are like mm -hmm. uh, the the TIFA scan or whatever the scans that we do in the fifth month or uh, something like that. Those are not covered by the public insurance. So yes, it's all can... covered by the private one. It's all covered by the one. Yes, private. Mm -hmm. By the by the public one, you have um, I think three three checkups uh, every every three every three months is uh, covered, and in the private one, you can go every month and do all the scanning and what what you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and also, what are the chances? Like in private case, uh, it's always like first we have to pay and then claim them from the company. From the insurance company. So, what are the chances that they get rejected or they are not covered by the private insurance company? Uh, in what in what cases they won't be uh, reimbursed? Well, that is uh, it, it. It's always uh, depending on the specific case. In general, in general methods where the doctor is not taking advantage of you and cheating, it, it will be paid. Uh, I say, but of course, there are also sometimes doctors billing too much and stuff but then we also help you with that yeah so yeah mo moving to private insurance this is my biggest concern that i have to uh, make the claims every time uh, that is my biggest concern and i'm not sure if uh, the company is going to reimburse me or not i have to keep i have to wait or follow up with them uh, well whatever. if if you are healthy now if the health questions are answered truly um, mm. then everything will be paid and will be covered um, for example, you, you make an application and you are completely healthy and you say healthy. So the, all the health questions is, did you have any problems? No, 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 no. Okay. And then after six months, you come around with something, diabetes or heart problems. Then of course, we will check first if we will write your doctors and check if, if it was there before already, if it was a precondition or not. So if it was not a precondition, everything will be paid. If it was a precondition, of course, then you lie to us. Yeah, it's just an example. Then we would ask, but everything is covered. As long as you don't lie to us, and I assume you don't, yeah, then you are fine off. Then everything is fine. Then everything will be paid. Hmm. But we are not allowed to exclude anything. Yeah. So what, what, if, what if it's a precondition and I didn't know about that at the time of the application? Then it's... Like if you have not mentioned it during the time of application, then it is seen that, that you're not declared something, then it might not be uh, covered. Or I think uh, Andy can add to it that sometimes you are also add a, a zoo sets, right? If I'm, if I'm correct. Yes, yes, yes. That can be both the case. But Andy, uh, just one question. So um, let's say if we are going for the private insurance before signing the contract, are there no tests done? to verify if everything is okay or because, yeah, as previously mentioned, it could be that yeah. we are not even aware of such conditions that we have because we never faced anything. It doesn't you mean- You can only, have... of course, you can only answer what you know. We answer you 11 questions and then you answer them, of course, uh, you give true answer as, as from what you know. If something is inside of you, what you don't know yet, uh, then you, we cannot blame you for that, of course. But there is, um, in general, if you are um, age 50 or age 49 and less, there is no checkup in general, unless you come directly from India. But if you are here already, and you are here already for a couple of months or years insured in the public one, then we are not doing a health checkup. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, because we trust you with the questions and, um, we could also ask the, the, the TK, for example, for your history. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So we are only making tests actually for for self-employed who is uh, coming directly from abroad, let's say, put it that way. Yeah. I just want to add a point, like uh, more, like with 11 questions, Andy said, I can also share it later. So it's all direct questions, which we should be knowing like most probably. And we had a situation, I think almost one and a half years ago. I mean, one of the questions, like if you had any kind of operation, like auto related stuff, I guess, if I'm not wrong. So in that one of the customers, he didn't reveal that he had a small uh, operation on one of in, in auto side, like almost three years back. Like the question was whether you had something between the last in the last five years. And he clearly wrote us, no, it, did, it was not a tick. So in that case, when it came to a position and they found out he had extra, he had to pay some, I think 50 or 60 euros extra. And then he's still in private, but in his case, he was allowed to stay in private. But if it was something more severe then probably uh, it would have been perceived as a complete lie and he might be rejected out of private. I think that's, uh, so it's mostly based on trust. It's not like all the time it's completely tested. So when you provide the right details, then there is really nothing you need to uh, worry about. When you try to falsify something and then later try to prove you are correct or something, then you know doctors, doctors can trace back and then definitely say if there's something happened in the past or not for sure. So that's also something we have to be honest uh, where in general, German system works in this space. Uh, we are trusting you. We are asking the questions. If you are the person who wants to uh, go, who wants to be sure about it, then of course you can go to the doctor. We can also give you those reports for yeah. the ones who have to. You can turn them in and then you're on the safe side. That's your own decision. But then you also have to pay for that checkup yourself. Yeah. But that you can also do, of course. Yeah. And Andy, what about in those cases, if I'm claiming something and my uh, let's suppose my private insurance company uh, again go to my uh, previous doctors to check if I have any health conditions or not? This mm -hmm. whole process, how much time it takes? That depends on how fast the doctors are answering. <laughs> and it depends on how fast you are answering. Uh, first of all, we will never write a doctor without your knowledge. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like uh, Datenschutz, Datenschutz, data protection in Germany is very high. Mm -hmm. So always when we write a doctor, we have to inform you first. Then you have the right to say no, or even you have to agree on it. it sometimes there already you lose a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, okay. but if you, if you say yes right away, mm -hmm. and then we write the doctor, then there's doctors who answer right away. But most doctors, they became doctors because they want to treat patients and they didn't become doctors because they want to fill out forms. So some doctors do that every, every three months. That is my experience from the last uh, 30 years. So the solution to that is call your doctor, say you get something from the insurance, please fill that out right away. Bitte, bitte, bitte. Yeah. And um, it, the best thing is you go there in person and put 10 euro in the, in the coffee kasse. Yeah, it's like the, the tip for the for the nurses, and then you will get it right away. Uh -huh, yeah. okay. And then you can make it fast. And as soon as we have all the papers, we will make the decision. But if it takes a couple of weeks, that is always uh, usually the mistake of, um, not the mistake, but uh, yeah, that the doctors don't want to do the paperwork, yeah. or that even the customers themselves don't answer it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But just adding to it, this a very uh, rare cases. Like normally, all these eleven questions or what questions, like very direct. Most likely, you will know these answers. Like whether you have diabetes or something like that. Whether you have treatment for something. So very common questions. So very yeah. rarely we come to a point where we have to go back and uh, check with the previous doctor if there was a previous condition on that. And it's not a very common occurrence which I've seen. Uh, at and least if if we get the papers time. from the doctor, let's say there yeah. was something, yeah. then it's also uh, Arak is also consulting, having consulting doctors. So it's not uh, only Arak um, um, staff who is checking on it. We are having like independent doctors who are checking it. That could also maybe sometimes take one or two weeks until they answer that. But it won't take a couple of months. If everybody's answering right, you will have the answer probably after two or three weeks. Yeah. So and every bill, what you get, you don't have to pay right away. Usually it says pay within four weeks, pay within six weeks, pay within eight weeks. Some say you have to pay right away, but that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> All good. 
So Andy, I just have one question before I take on like uh, this no claim bonus you spoke about. Is it like immediate or a customer has to be there in the with the company for many years before they can claim that? Like for example, if someone signs tomorrow, uh, what would be the case? Would they get immediately or if you they... would sign tomorrow, we would start in November. Then yeah. you would get the no claim bonus, the two point five monthly. You would get for two months out of twelve months, so one sixth of that. Okay. Okay. But you always get it next year, September. Okay. So okay. you start sep- you start November, you don't claim anything for the two months. Then in next year, September, you get something like 0.4 monthly. <laughs> all good. But still, they get, they, it's not something. Still, you get uh, some. Yes. All good. So I have one question on the chat before I take a question from the people. So what about people who have like chronic diseases? Can they come to private? Like, for example, hypothyroidism or something like that? Is it? Allow with that, for, with that, with is that that special case is every third or fourth person is having okay. it. Yes, there's special solutions for that. You can come to us. Yes, okay. even without much more premium, if it's not in a very bad condition. But the normal one with this altruboxine medicine stuff that okay. doesn't cost more, that doesn't cost much, anyways. Perfect. Uh, I, I know it costs like one euro in India for three months. <laughs> <laughs> and I had yeah. that from a, from an Indian customer. Just, true. just now, and it's, it's like four euro the whole year. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That's true. But I think it's a question. No, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's we won't exclude it. But there's yeah. two solutions. Uh, either you have a deductible for that because mm-hmm. the precondition is there already, but then you don't have to pay extra premium, or you pay twenty five euro extra premium in that case. Oh. But it does make sense to pay three hundred euro more a year for a medicine what costs four euro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. Uh, sorry. Someone, yeah. So uh, I, 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 just, just, just finish me yeah. this. Yeah. So yeah. I think, uh, like we spoke about claiming, and also we looked at very complex things. What about a simple claim process? Like, say, I upload a bill. How long does it take? Like, I had a fever. I uploaded the bill. So how long does a normal claim? If you if you turn it in with the app, there's an application on the yeah. smartphone. You just take a picture of the bill. You upload it. Uh, sometimes you get it within two or three days. Thank you. So. Uh, sorry, Bharat, I wanted to finish off all the chat questions because people wanted to leave, so they wrote me personally. So please ask a question now, Bharat. Uh, I hope Andy has some time to answer your questions, please. Yeah, uh, so I wanted to ask about, like, uh, will, I, will I receive a bill for each and every consultation uh, if I go to a doctor today just for a normal checkup? So will I receive a bill for that? Yes. And, uh, okay. Yeah, you will you, you will receive all the bills and then you forward it to us. Of course, we also assist you with that, and uh, then we either pay for it or you pay for it, like what you what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, and suppose I say suppose I say like I want to consider moving to a private. So, what are the next steps uh, to get in touch with you? The next step would be uh, first that. Um, Aaron is um, sending you some some things you can overlook that and then we can make a private one with Livington or, or with me. Uh, at end of the call, I think you will be getting anyway the automated messages, but after that I will be sending all 50 of you who join a small uh, transcript of this interview and also from some of our old interviews because I know it's a very short call. We couldn't cover everything, but hopefully we covered most of the points. Like one example is we didn't talk about uh, alternate medicines or we didn't talk about like that you can actually choose a doctor compared to public where you have you don't, don't have the option of choosing a hospital. Such small, small points will be added in this email. So you will get it. You can reply to that. You can book an appointment and we can talk further uh, individually if you have other questions. But that answers your question. Yeah, I have one last question from my side. Yeah. Andy, can you uh, tell us like, what do you think are the disadvantages of private insurance compared to public insurance if there are any please yeah well if you decide for it now as i said already and then in six months you will get married your spouse is not working and you will have uh triplets (laughs) that would be a disadvantage from the financial point of view not from the coverage point of view no if you are wanting the better coverage and if you or either you want to save it's both possible it depends on what you want that we mm-hmm. will also work out in the private uh, one <laughs> it it could be a disadvantage if if there would be a, um, a health history what you didn't tell us 
Yeah, we also <laughs> talked about that. Then it could become a disadvantage, of course, because then it causes problems. But as long as you are honest and tell us everything, then there's not many disadvantages, actually. Okay. In terms of coverage, for example, a particular type of surgery or something? Yes. Then there are no differences, basically. There is differences. It's much better coverage with the private one because ah, you, have okay. a choice, you, have, you have a free choice of doctors worldwide. In the public one, you have the next hospital and the doctor who's on duty. That is defined in the German law. The next gelegene Krankenhaus, the next hospital closest to you and the doctor on duty. And it, no matter if that doctor is one year in, in, in his work or 30 years. So in the public one, you're always depending on, you don't have a choice. I mean, no. you are helped, no. that is good. But okay. the doctor can be good or not good. But if you, let's, if you have an accident, it doesn't matter if you're public or, or private. Uh, <laughs> it's important is the ambulance is picking you up and you're, somebody's helping you. But if you have a diagnosis, let's say a difficult cancer, mm -hmm. and there's specialists in the United States or in India or in Asia or wherever, you Google mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And then you say, I want to be treated by that person or the public one, you cannot. I mean, you can do it with the public one, you have to pay for it yourself. With the private one is covered. At least in Iraq is covered. Okay, okay, good to know. I think that's a very good point, Andy. Yeah, so I did. yeah. thank you. Good to know. Thanks. And Thanks well, maybe, sorry, yeah. sorry. sorry. Uh, no, no problem. What will happen if, uh, for example, if my friend is, he got a job and his salary is like 52,000 per year. So are there any options in private insurance for him or he has to wait? They have to wait first. Okay. Freelancer, freelancer or above 65K. That's the only two possibilities. Okay, sure. Thanks. What about any supplementary insurances? The um, Zusatzversicherung? Yeah. Yes, you can do that from, there's no no uh, income level. Everybody can do that, of course. Yeah. That's possible. You can have an upgrade to in, the, in the hospital. You can uh, an upgrade with a dental plan. That is possible. But of course, it doesn't make sense for the one who is paying 938 already and then paying 100 euro more for the for the supplementary, um, it makes sense for the person maybe who is earning 52,000, yeah, or for the person who is earning 40k. That is also possible, yeah. Sorry, and, and it's individual, right? Individual person has to take uh, individually, so that's yes, possible. yes, yes, each person, yeah. Sorry, I have two questions, and I'm sorry if it's repeating because I couldn't join since the beginning. Okay. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, would we be informed initially before making the contract if something is not covered in this insurance based on our health condition? We are not allowed to exclude anything. We are only allowed to take extra premium for for um, precondition. So nothing will be um, nothing will be um, excluded. So Andy, that means whatever the condition would be, it would be covered in the private insurance. Can I assume? If, if the condition is too serious, then we would uh, not sign the contract. And we would say, no, sorry, not now. We have to wait until you're more healthy. Or if a if, if person, for example, has diabetes or cancer, no public, no private one will ever sign it. Okay, got it. And yeah. my another question would be, um, for, for example, for the public insurance we have the normal body checkup for every three years uh, mm -hmm. how how is it in case of private insurance and for that also should we be paying first and then sending the bills to you it depends on the product line first of all but the checkups is much more than in the in the public one yeah um, uh -huh. there's a list of it it's a pdf depending on the product line it's like three or four pages pdf and then it states all the things which are in general for kids, for uh, women with a um, age, yeah. And then starting with 35, 40, 50, it's all stated there. But it's more, um, more checkups uh, included than in the public one, much more. And you can uh, you can send us those. You will get the bill from the doctor. You pay it, and then we are reimbursing you. And this checkup won't uh, destroy the no claim bonus. So we want that you do checkups. Of course, because checkup is always good. <laughs> it's better you do checkups mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. 
Okay, and, and one last question is, if my partner is earning less than me and I am eligible for the private insurance, so in that case, can he opt out of the public insurance and be insured in my private insurance? Not if, not if he is employed and earning less than 65K. And he has okay. to stay with the public one. He can do the supplementary one first. Once he's mm -hmm. above the 65K, um, he can also go to private. Or if he's a freelancer, he can also go to private, no matter of uh, income. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Perfect. So I, I have think... one stupid question. Sorry, sir. Yeah, please. Yeah, so for this no claim bonus, for example, um, some some days we are sick and we take sick leaves. So does this sick leave affect this no claim bonus? The sick leave could be one day or sometimes even one week where we get a crank doom from the doctor. But the sick leave sick itself, leave. the sick leave itself doesn't affect uh, the employer has to pay for six weeks your income. After those six weeks, if you would be sick longer than six weeks, then there is an extra, uh, extra, um, what you say, extra component. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Krankentagegeld. Mm -hmm. You yep. don't have to take that, but you should take it actually to compensate your income loss. Yeah, because after six weeks, the employer doesn't have to pay anything anymore. Yep. But um, yeah, that you always should actually include. It costs like 40, 50 euro depending on your in, the height of your income and on your age mm -hmm. um, but that it doesn't affect then the non claim bonus because it's uh, it doesn't have to do anything with the uh, inpatient or outpatient costs okay. but of course if you are longer sick than six weeks there will be doctor bills also exactly. so the, yeah, yeah. there won't yeah. be a no claim bonus in that year <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah so my question was more into um, if we have a headache or fever and we decide to take a day off or sometimes we have a bad flu and then we are like um, that doesn't affect that doesn't affect clear thank you thank you thank you i think this is a one question which is quite new it's not a stupid question it was a good question <laughs> it's the first time i'm hearing this and uh, always always you if yeah. you if you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you the curtain shine the doctor will bill you and if you turn that bill in it will destroy the no claim bonus, but the normal bill for, let's say, I have a headache, yeah, will be something like maybe 30, 40, 50 euro. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So then yeah. you have to decide if that day off is worth 30, 40, 50 euro or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's, 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 by, that's, by the way, a disadvantage in comparison to the public one. Yeah. <laughs> True. Sorry, Sorry yeah. for interrupting, but in such cases, for example, if I'm on uh, sick leave, for example, for three months because yes. of my condition, and because only six weeks of it is is covered in the sick leave, so do I have to pay extra premium, or is it still um, covered if, in the insurance? If you are including this Krankentage Geld in the beginning, that is, of course, you can include it or exclude it. If you include it, it's more expensive, but it's really advisable to do it, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah. right now, right Sorry. now yeah. in the public one, you have um, also not covered everything. If, if you are uh, sick up to one and a half years, it's only covered and it's only covering like 60 to 70 percent of your income. So, for example, you have 3000 euro net income now, or let's say three or four thousand, then you will have 40 or 40 percent less after six weeks most people don't know only first six weeks is fully compensated after that yeah. you will get less money in your pockets even in yeah. public so that's what yeah yeah, yeah. I, I know that yeah thank you yeah. thank you for that. Right. so so in private if we include this crank and tag gel then we get this hundred percent after six weeks or then you can you can do 100 percent unlimited yeah that's another advantage in comparison to the public one Look at better, and, and is it possible that during signing the contract we don't take this and later, after one or two years, I decide I want this, yes, it's also, possible. it's also possible to do it later, but then uh, always you shouldn't forget always if you do an upgrade or uh, or include something, you will always have to answer the health questions again, okay? Clear. Yeah, Understood. and it could be the possibility you have something in between, uh -huh. we are saying no, you don't okay. get the upgrade, yeah, okay. Okay, understand. Andy, just one question because you mentioned it. Even with Flexi Pro, uh, is this the possible? Is this the case that they have to answer a health question when they do an upgrade? No, if they have the Flexi Pro, then you can upgrade, for example, from from Mid Extra to Mid Best, but it's you cannot include the Kanken target. That okay. is not covered by the Flexi Pro. 
Okay, okay. Good to know. I mean, you can, but you have to answer the health questions. Okay, good to know for myself also. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I have a question. So I had a friend who's who had to be in isolation also in the hospital for like 15 months. And he actually had public insurance and he was covered throughout this throughout this 15 months. So will it be the same case when we have private insurance? For example, if we have to stay more than three or four months in the hospital in isolation or for some reason? Of course, if it's if it's medically indicated, uh, then it's always covered. Yeah. Medi it, it says in the in the terms medicinisch notwendig, medically mm -hmm. necessary. Is there, a, yeah. is there any limit for that? Like for example, no, here it was no 15. Limit. No, 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 yeah. no limit. No limit. Thank you. Perfect. So I think we have crossed well above our time limit. So if there are any questions, you will all uh, get email from this ID or you can also note it down. Some of you also have my numbers also from our groups. You can write me then directly. Then we will uh, put list of questions for Andy. So I thank uh, all of you for taking time on Wednesday and uh, attending the session. I thank Andy for being so patient and extending the session to almost one and a half hours now total. And this was think, almost, almost two sessions now after having <laughs> That's uh, true. It's okay. <laughs> That's true. And uh, thank you for patiently answering all this, Andy, and wish you a happy uh, evening. We will talk later in the private ones uh, later on. And thank you once again. And I wish you all a, a happy day ahead and happy weekend, which is coming quite fast. Okay. So, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.